My wife cheated, so I tricked her into publicly admitting to having the affair and having herpes. Okay, so I'm the co-worker that encouraged him to post this, unfortunately, your account has to be 7 days old to post here, so I gifted him an alt I made for a joke about a month ago. This story is about 12 years old. I told it to one of my co-workers yesterday, and he said I should share it on Reddit. Today, he again nudged me, so here we are having drinks before the 4 day weekend, and my writing is complete, so first time here, and hi, y'all, sorry if there are typos, I included a TLDR at the end, in college, I met the woman who I thought was my one, we dated for about 2 years and had a biggest wedding, after a 10 month engagement, her family was pretty well to do in a small southern town, we were both continuing our educations, and I was also working to support us, I was pursuing a masters in engineering while she was finishing her her doctorate in anthropology. Over the summer, an opportunity came up for her to make some extra money by going on a religious studies trip to Jamaica. I didn't hesitate when she asked me about it. I mean, she was going to get to visit Jamaica and get paid for it. I saw no downside other than missing her being at home for six weeks. Little did I know at the time, but she had been fucking the professor, he had hung out with us, smoked my weed, and drank my fucking beer. I considered him a friend, who arranged the trip for a couple months, and it was a getaway for them to bang all over the island. I, clueless and happy, went about the weeks while she was gone, taking extra shifts so I could match what she made in our account and surprise her. What a dipshit, right? One of the students from the trip actually sought me out to clue me in. I didn't believe him until I started looking for evidence on my own. I broke down and checked her texts while she was sleeping, and nothing was there. There were a few VMs, so I decided to listen, and there it was. A message from the giant asshole saying how exciting it was that I almost caught them. I opened up her laptop and hit the emails after that. It was piles and piles of shit, making fun of me for not knowing, fucking in our bed, and laughing about it. There was so much, and I was so heartbroken. I was still too hurt to take any action, I was lost. I had no idea what to do, so I sat on it for a couple weeks, and acted as normally as I could. I noticed everything now, and I felt so stupid for not seeing it before. There are so many signs. One stuck out in particular, I noticed that our stash of homemade weed lube, if you've never tried it, I highly recommend giving it a go, was going down even though we weren't having sex. It was obvious that they were also using the fruits of my labor to get off more effectively. This really pissed me off. Unreasonably so. Hulk is fucking mad. It finally all hit me. I was a goddamn joke to these assholes, and they were using the lube I made and fucking in my bed. I didn't hurt anymore, I just wanted to make them hurt. So, while she was studying at the library, I made a new batch of lube. I put enough weed in it for it to smell like normal, but I also added some poison ivy from our backyard to the mixture, and after refilling the spray bottle we used for application, I waited. A few days go by and I'm working extra so I can be out of the house more, and bam, bait taken. That night, after she goes to sleep, my plan goes into action. I sneak her phone away and delete my contact, while replacing his phone number in his contact as mine. I go to bed but can't sleep, because it feels like I'm five and tomorrow is Christmas. Dawn arrives, and she's in the shower. I get a text. I'm super itchy. Are you okay? Now, Lord, now is my time. Look, I thought it had cleared up, but I guess I had a flare up. I'm sorry, but I've got herpes, and I guess you do now too. I heard this bitch squeak in the shower. I'm covering my mouth, damn near losing it. I went on to tell her that it was time to end things now. A new semester was about to start, and I kind of have a little crush on another T. Uh, I wanted her mad. This is a woman who never got told she was growing up, and never had to deal with rejection, let alone from a balding dude in his 50s with herpes. When she got out of the shower, it was obvious she had been crying, but I could see the anger in her eyes. I could see how uncomfortable she was, squirming at the table, drinking coffee, and mulling the situation over. Another little nudge is what she needed. The reply she got to her pages and pages of anger and sadness was, thanks for the good times, but can you keep this a secret between us? I don't want to ruin my chances with anyone else. She's flush with anger now, just seething. She gathered her keys and headed out the door without even saying goodbye. I knew where she was going. I booted up her laptop and set it to reformat, deleting her dissertation and any notes pertaining to it before following her to campus. I parked a few lots over and rushed over to his office, where I found her screaming at him for giving her herpes. There's lots of people there, professors, aides, students, and other faculty. I'm dying. He is beyond embarrassed, 
and confused as fuck. She is ugly, crying in front of her peers. I'm in heaven. I didn't even care the people were going to think I had herpes too. The fallout was apocalyptic in their department. He lost his job due to the code of conduct at the university. We got divorced the following year. State law was that we had to be separated for one full year before being granted a divorce. I got to keep most of the assets, primarily savings, and not a ton, but I worked for it. She never finished her doctorate and went on to be a perpetually pregnant housewife who sells Herbalife on Facebook. And he teaches high school now. It took a few years for it all to unfold, but watching it was glorious wife cheated. So I made her think she had herpes and engineered a social situation for her to out her affair publicly herself. Edit, a few of you are asking for a recipe for the goodies, so here you go. Follow the directions for use or it's kind of a waste. And this is totally geared towards the ladies. We are talking big fucking O's. Use polyurethane condoms. It breaks down latex. We'd lube, one quarter ounce flour or one gram CO2, extracted live resin, preferred, four ounces. MCT coconut oil, two 16 ounce mason jars, three coffee filters, only if a flour is used, two drops of tea tree oil, it really makes a difference. 30 leaves of poison ivy, small spray bottles, think perfume, put oils, wax, or flowers in mason jar A, and heat in the oven for 80 minutes at 240 degrees. Turn the oven off and allow it to cool for about an hour. Strain through coffee filters if you used flowers into the second mason jar, and then fill the spray bottles. Here's the instructions and description my current amazing wife wrote for a friend wanting to try it. At first, you can feel the warmth building up. Everything feels more intense to the touch. The wait between application and playtime is a wonderful mystery. As time progresses, the butterflies in the pit of your stomach become more active, while you feel more self-aware as the sensations and sensitivity increase. Walking becomes part of the foreplay. The action causes more friction and heat to build up. As your spouse begins touching your neck and shoulders, the warmth rises up your body, sending chills down your spine. Each touch becomes more euphoric than the last until foreplay is done. From there, enjoy complete euphoria in your partner's embrace. Application 8-10 total sprays. Use 2-3 of your fingers at a time. Self-application Spray on fingers and massage around the clitoris and labia down toward your opening, working the oil inward towards your G-spot. To help with cramps, spray on the tampon, insert, and go. Without tampon, get 5 milliliters in a syringe, insert, spray, and stay with the hips lifted for 1-2 minutes. With spouse, have your spouse apply the spray to their fingers, gently spreading it over the clitoris and labia, pushing some into your cookie. Think of it like painting, the better the coverage, the better it will feel. Be sure to apply to your G-spot, it's about 2 inches on the front wall of your vagina, for an added plus. Apply to the O-spot, which is directly across from the G-spot on the back wall of the vagina. The application shouldn't take more than 3-5 minutes, and then don't even touch it for at least 20 minutes. Spend this time exploring other areas of your lovely treasure. Don't use it if you are overly intoxicated, you'll simply waste it. Asterisk poison ivy is optional, and not recommended for self-use. I-30M have a beautiful wife who loves to serve others. We bought a home down the street from my family. I have a sweet sister less than 17 who likes to crash at our house with her friends. My wife normally is pretty easygoing until recently. My sister's friends have been leaving messes. Mostly towels on the floor after using our pool. My wife got upset picking up after them every day. I have asked my sister to make sure the house is clean after they leave and it has been better. My wife also complained that some of her perfume slash clothes personal items have gone missing. My sister said it's not her. I believe my sister. I just don't see her doing that. I told my wife and we agreed to just replace them. Last week my wife made a couple of pans of cinnamon rolls from scratch. One pan was for us, the second pan was for a co-worker's family who is experiencing a tragedy. My wife went to the gym. I went to work and my sister and her friends came by. The one pan wasn't enough for her and her friends. They wanted the second pan of cinnamon rolls and my sister texted my wife asking if they could eat them. My wife said no. They ate them anyways. My wife upset went and bought new locks. When I came home my wife handed me a new key and told me that she didn't want anyone else to have a key to our house. 
I tried to calm her down and tell her that I would just go replace the eaten cinnamon rolls with store-bought ones. My wife decided this was her hill to die on and said no my sister lost the privilege to come when we are not home. Replacing stolen items wasn't good enough anymore. My mom called and asked if my sister could use the pool as a back-to-school party. I was under the impression my mom would be there. I said yes, my mom was at work and our schedules clashed. The easiest solution was for me to change the locks back so they could come into the house. My mom didn't come with my sister. When my wife got home after the party. It was a mess. She sent me photos. She called me the A for changing the locks without talking to her about it. Keep in mind she did too, then told me I broke her trust. She wasn't safe in her home because she keeps getting robbed and I refused to put an end to it. I did talk to my sister, then my wife let me know she was staying with a friend for a while. Am I the A here? I feel like I have tried to right any wrongs that have happened. Between my wife and my sister. Update asterisk sorry I haven't been able to reply the past couple of hours. I have been busy. I talked to my mom again and let her know my sister isn't allowed over without me home. I asked a friend's wife who is a maid to come deep clean our home. So if, when my wife comes home it's clean. The last thing is my mom asked me to help cover my sister's cheer. She is on track for a scholarship. I told my mom I would pay half of my wife's things were returned. If not the money was going to replace the stolen items. Also my sister was invited to homecoming. She wanted me to buy a dress. I told her no for not following our home rules and the money I saved for the dress is going to pay for the maid. I did replace the locks again. I also am planning a romantic dinner I will make and clean up. I heard a lot about the cinnamon rolls. Someone on here gave me the idea to make them. I am for a dessert. Update, my sister and my mom left a few minutes ago. My sister had a bag of my wife's things. More than I thought was gone. Most items are in poor shape. The big thing is she had my wife's grandmother's ring I thought was in the safe. I had no idea it was gone. My sister said that she found it on my wife's nightstand during the party. She forgot she had it on when she left our home. The ring isn't valuable it's just sentimental. I told my mom who the ring belonged to. My mom lost it. My sister is now grounded. Last update tonight, my wife is coming home. I am staying at a friend's house, until we can work some of this out. I already stated it but I did put the locks back on my wife bought. My family doesn't have that key. Early morning update, my mom called my wife last night and asked what my sister can do to fix slash replace the damaged items. My wife said have her meet me every morning at 5 am. I decided to tag along and see what my wife had planned. Trying to support her in whatever punishment she decides to do. You know the cinnamon rolls. My wife's co-works four years old is in the final stages of cancer. My wife's plan is for my sister and her to prepare breakfast, get their other kids up and ready for the day. Start laundry, basic cleanup. So her co-worker and his wife can spend as much time as he can with the sick child before work. My sister was silent the whole time coming back home. I can tell it really hit her that her life isn't as hard. Even being grounded. Last and final post, my wife has given me a second chance as long as I follow her list of rules. For a while no family at our home. No family borrowing our things. 3. No one is allowed a key for, I help with the chores around the house. Including cooking meals. Last my wife is okay with me seeing my sister but asked that we all go to counseling to understand why my sister is targeting her. My wife said all of this has been really hard and she doesn't want to cause more issues but she just doesn't trust my sister and can't have her using out things. I, 31F, kinda got ghosted by my husband, 33M. I'm in a really horrible situation, and I have no idea what to do right now. I'm very new to Reddit and just needed advice, so sorry in advance for the format and the length, this is very long. 
I'm probably going to get flamed for this, but while you're at it, at least give me advice on how to proceed. My husband and I have been together for eight years and married for six. We have a son together, four months, and have been in a very happy and fulfilling relationship until about six months ago. I started an affair with my ex from college that lasted about four months. I genuinely had no intentions of cheating and thought of it as just catching up with an old friend when he reached out to me. I don't even know why I did it or why I let it go on for so long. So yeah, it lasted for four months, and we were regularly having sex both at mine and my husband's home, my AP's home, and hotels whenever his place was unavailable. And yes, he is married with three kids. During this time, I became increasingly distant from my husband, and he began to notice. He is a very smart man and knows whenever something isn't right. Well, one night he asked me flat out if I was cheating on him. I denied it, of course, but he didn't back down. He told me while looking into my eyes that he knew something was up, but that he was going to let this go, because he had no proof. However, he said if he found out down the road that I had lied to him, we would be done, no questions asked. I took that threat very seriously, and immediately ended it with the AP. He reluctantly agreed to end it, and I devoted myself to being the best wife and mother I possibly could. I felt very guilty about how I had neglected my husband and started initiating intercourse more, doing things in bed I normally wouldn't do, helping more around the house, and with our kid. My husband was very cold to me in the beginning, but things went back to normal after a while. One day, my AP contacted me again, via Facebook. I told him in no uncertain terms that we were done, but he said he wanted us to meet one last time. I foolishly agreed to this, and we decided to meet up at a hotel, two hours from where I live. I wanted to experience this one one last time before calling it quits for good. As you can guess already, this didn't go according to plan. After AP and I were done with the deed, I received a short text from my husband that read, I know where you are, who you are with, and what you are doing. We are done. Don't bother coming back home. I've transferred half of our savings into your checking account. Have a good life. I can't describe the wave of emotions I felt at that moment. I tried calling him and texting him, but he had me blocked on everything. He eventually unblocked my phone number, but said it was only to deal with our son. Everything else was going to be through his lawyer. I've never been more depressed in my life than I was when this happened. I decided to go home the next day, but he wasn't there. Neither was our son. Whenever I texted him, he would only respond if I asked about my son. He sent me a text saying we would each have our son for a week and nothing else. I couldn't talk to his side of the family because they all had me blocked, and my family was very disappointed in me. My best friend is the only person I can talk to. I had literally no contact with my husband for a whole week, and when I did, it was to inform me that his brother would be bringing our son over to me for my week of custody. This was the most painful period of my life. How could he be so cruel and indifferent? Are we supposed to talk about things like this? I know I probably deserve it, but he never even gave me the chance to apologize or explain. The guilt I have and the way he is treating me are literally driving me insane. I feel like he never even loved me if he could be this emotionless. I'm not even asking him to take me back, just to talk, yell at me, anything. Doesn't he want some form of closure, at least? This brings me to today. I got served divorce papers, and I literally can't believe he'd go this far without even having as much as a talk. Yes, I shouldn't have cheated, but I can't help but feel like his reaction is very childish. I haven't even read the papers or hired a lawyer, things just can't end this way. I sent him a text telling him that I would contest this divorce even if it left us in financial ruin. So my question to all of you strangers is, what should I do? I'm really lost right now, and I can't even function. I can't believe my whole life is about to end, and I'm not even being given the chance to fix it. Should I contact the police since I don't know where he is, and he changed the locks on our house? Any advice will be appreciated. TLDR, I cheated on my husband, and now he won't talk to me, and wants a divorce. What do I do to win him back? I cheated on my husband and ruined his and his family's life. 
I can't believe what is happening around me, it feels like my world is falling apart. I know I may seem sociopathic because I am composed, but I think I'm in too much shock to be emotional. My husband struggled with depression as a teenager before I met him, from the ages of 15 to 18. I was told by him that he self-harmed daily and attempted suicide. He said he eventually had to leave his house because his father thought he was faking it and just needed exercise or went outside. When we met at 22, it was love at first sight. He was handsome, tall, and amazingly charming, and he made me feel amazing. He was super intelligent and driven as well, which made me infatuated with him. I feel sick typing this out. When we were 24, I convinced him to mend his relationship with his father. He was at our wedding two years later, and he was a father figure to me as well. I don't know how to say the rest of the post. I've been calm up until now, but I'm shaking again. I cheated. My husband was working overtime to afford us a vacation. I was at a girl's night out. He was so handsome, masculine, and confident. I guess with my alcohol light drinker. I just forgot about my husband. I went to his place. And we did it. We had sex. It was amazing better than anything my husband ever did. I fell in love. I knew my husband was the love of my life. But this guy satisfied me like he never could. I feel fucking awful, sick, and disgusted with myself just typing this out the next morning. My husband saw our texts on my bedside table. He snooped on my phone and found our plans to meet up again. Being honest, I probably wasn't going to meet up with him again. I just loved the thought of it. My husband killed himself three days later. A fucking extension cord in the garage. The cord snapped at some point, but he was long gone. His neck snapped on the cold pavement. A fucking pull-up bar and an extension cord took him away from me. It gets so much fucking worse. I told his father it was from his depression as a teen, not that I had cheated on him. He left a note describing in detail how cheating was his biggest fear. And he found his demons coming back to him and didn't want to live depressed anymore. He wrote, I love you, at the end, and that was it. I told his dad it was all depression from his teens. His dad killed himself that night. This sounds fake. This sounds like some fake eighth grade story. I feel fucking ill. I feel empty. His dad didn't leave anything. He must have thought it was from his not being supportive. I'm suicidal. I want to leave this world. I made the biggest mistake of my entire fucking life. And this is how I paid for it. I am so scared of dying. But I feel I have to. I have the person I fucked that night coming over soon just to take care of me. He's going to make sure I don't kill myself so don't bother trying to help me in the comments. I don't know how to say this, but I feel I don't deserve the hate that's about to come my way. I know I fucked up, but my husband and my father figure just fucking died, and it's all my fault. Please cut me some slack. I just want someone to know it's my fault. Maybe one day I can forgive myself. I ruined everything for nothing. I don't really know where to begin. I have destroyed my family, my husband is leaving me, and my children don't even want to be in the same room. My sister suggested I post here to maybe get some advice. It took a lot of effort to even type this out. I have been crying for weeks, and I found that I was lying to myself. I'm trying to make myself look better in this story. What hope is there when I can't even be honest with myself all alone by myself I am in a terrible state, so this is a bit all over the place. Sorry about the wall of gibberish in advance. I am 38, my husband is 39, and we have four children. 15 to 8 years, and we have been together since I was 16, married for 18 great years. I had an affair. It felt great for a while. Now, in hindsight, I know it was all a delusion, a fantasy. Now I am so ashamed, I don't know the words to even describe it. I can't even look at myself in the mirror, everybody hates me, including my own sister, who is the only person who would take me in. My sister is also a cheater, her fiancé left her for it. 
Still, she yells at me, constantly telling me what a piece of s I am. She found out about my affair early on. She warned me that I was on a path to disaster if I didn't stop immediately and come clean. I was too selfish and stupid to see that, I was too wrapped up in myself to listen to her. So I refused to stop, in turn, she cut me out of her life until she picked me up. My husband started divorce proceedings and doesn't even want to talk to me, I don't know how or even if. I can fix any of this. He has said he would come and talk to me the last three days, but he hasn't shown up. I can't blame him. I hurt him so badly, I broke him, my family, my children, and myself, and I wish so much I could take their pain away and just disappear. All I do is stay in bed, staring at the ceiling, hating myself. Whenever it is quiet, it feels like my heart is trying to escape from my chest. I get panic attacks where I struggle to breathe and am hardly able to eat. Whenever I fall asleep, in my nightmares, I see my husband's pain and him looking at me without love in his eyes. The therapist I have been seeing believes this may have started for me about three years ago. My best friend from school died suddenly from cancer, she never married. She was a partner in a law firm and had an extravagant lifestyle. I have always admired her. I have an okay career in marketing and have been a stay-at-home mom for long periods of time when our children were small. The time I spent at home with my children was the best time of my life. For some reason, I started re-examining my life when my friend died. Especially what I hadn't done. I became very critical of myself. I started feeling inadequate. My self-esteem plummeted. I had only ever been with my husband, and I started to resent him for it, like he had denied me romance and experiences or something in reality, I twisted it around in my head, it was me who actually pursued him. I was the one who wanted marriage and a family. I felt like I should have done better with my life, experienced more, done more. Somehow. I managed to blame my husband for all of it. I didn't actually talk to him about it, deep down, I knew it was just stupid. Still, I grew resentful, and gradually, over time, I would push my husband away. I had no reason at all to feel this way. I had a loving, attentive husband, happy, healthy children, a good job, a great sexual life, hobbies, good health, nice vacations, friends, a great extended family, a good economy, etc. My life was wonderful by most measures. Of course, it wasn't perfect, but whose as my younger sister got engaged around this time, she had been a bit of a party animal growing up, and her fiancé was wonderful. I became jealous of her, like her life had somehow been better than mine. My sister cheated on her fiancé before they got married, and he left her. She was devastated. She has told me that it's her biggest regret, but it's only now that the shoe is on my foot that I understand her. Somehow I got obsessed with her cheating, I started having fantasies about it and dreaming about it. So about seven months ago, I started to respond to flirting from a younger married co-worker. It turned into an emotional affair almost immediately. I loved the attention, he knew just what to say somehow. The first two months were a whirlwind, so exciting, and a massive rush. During this time, I neglected my husband and my family. I would deny my husband intimacy, and I treated him very poorly. Somehow, I managed to resent him for what I was doing. I blamed him for the guilt I was feeling. Looking back, I clearly see how much I hurt him. I saw the pain on his face. Pain was so easily ignored at the time. I remember how hard he tried to win me back. But at the time, I somehow managed to justify in my mind that what I was doing was my right, I deserved it. In my mind, everybody should just be happy for me. 
I managed to convince myself that I was entitled to this affair, that it was good for me, and that nothing else mattered. It's turned from an emotional to a physical affair in around two months. The sex was mediocre at best, and my AP was a very selfish lover. When it turned physical, the excitement I felt during the emotional affair started to slowly die off. I kept the affair going, I wanted that initial excitement back. But the more time I spent with the AP, the less I felt that initial rush. We never had a real or deep emotional connection. It was just pretending. Still, I actually believed I loved him. I was also starting to feel more and more guilty for what I was doing, so I took it out on my husband. Somehow I managed to blame him for how I felt and was absolutely terrible to him. Then I felt guilty for that, blamed him for that, and treated him even worse because of it. Around two months into the physical affair, I noticed a drastic change in my husband's behavior. He stopped trying to initiate intimacy. He stopped all the little things he used to do for me. He used to leave love notes around for me to find. Normally, he would go out of his way to make me laugh or smile. He used to kiss and hug me all the time and make this little joyful sound when he did so. He stopped including me in his life, he would not even engage me in conversation. He used to make my favorite meals on the days I had to work late, now he doesn't even make a plate for me when he makes a normal dinner. He would only make food for himself and the kids. I tried arguing with him about it, but he just left the house without even saying a word. I didn't want to accept it, I was in denial, but I know now that he has completely disconnected from our relationship. The affair with AP deteriorated quickly after that, but it continued for almost over a month before I finally broke it off with AP strangely enough, I haven't had any desire to have any more contact with him. I started going to individual counseling. My therapist pretty much spelled it all out for me, but still, it didn't sink in. I refused to come clean. I started to desperately try to reconnect with my husband. I was still in total denial, but I managed to convince myself that if I acted like the perfect wife, he would come back to me. My husband showed no interest at all, but he would come around eventually. I told myself. I believed the crushing guilt would go away if I could reconnect with my husband. I believed we would return to normal, stronger than ever. He would never know the full truth of my betrayal. I would dress up the way he likes, spotlessly clean the house, try to initiate, cook his favorite food anything I could think of. Nothing worked. Even if I tried to just touch his hand he would pull away from me. My husband would barely look at me, he would spend a lot of time out of the house. When I tried to talk to him, in most cases, he wouldn't even respond. If he answered at all, it would be. As anyone says, revenge cheating was necessary. So this happened quite a while ago, I'd say about four years. My then boyfriend, M23 was verbally abusive, and he was a player in his own head. My dumbass at the time thought he was faithful because he said all the pretty lies to my face, and hid his shady sheet. For instance, he would constantly be going out of town with his friends, and end up at strip clubs, bars, and prostitutes. But he would say that all of this was for his friends, and he had no interest. At the same time, when he would call me, he would make sure I'm at home, not doing anything. If I were to go out, he would force me to send photos of whom I'm with, where we are, etc. Obviously, he has trust issues, but I did trust him like an idiot. Later on in the relationship, I'd say like one year in, I noticed how we didn't talk as often as before and the sex was as frequent which then made me question him. And it turns out I don't turn him on as much as I used to because I gained like 15 pounds. So he decided to go and cheat on me, with someone he knew, and then proceeded to tell me all of this just, to say he can get a hard on and it was my fault for being fat and not pleasing him. Enough, that's when I broke off and decided, fuck, it's revenge time. I got my body down 30 pounds and toned myself 
then made sure he saw me in public with my banging body and fresh outfit. I knew where he works so I just went there around his quitting time, and he followed me and caught up to me and explained how sorry and stupid he acted a month before and he wanted me back. Of course I said okay because now the trap is set. My BF has a really attractive friend whom I was looking to fuck, and to my luck, we all met up that same night. Right in front of my unsuspecting boyfriend, I started to get frisky and play around with his friend. And then when I rubbed my foot into his crotch under the table, I think my boyfriend noticed. So he pulled me aside and started yelling at me how much of a slut I am and yada yada. No matter, I returned to the table unfazed and kissed his friend deeply and passionately in front of him, leaving him shocked and dumbfounded. Then I took his friend by the hand and walked to get a cab for ourselves to go enjoy the rest of that night. My ex followed us and kept trying to convince his friend not to go. While we were waiting for the cab, I turned to my ex and straight up told him that it's his fault for not noticing what a catch I was, and since he was too busy plowing other women for his own amusement, there shouldn't be a problem. He can carry on, and I reminded him that his friend is way more handsome than he is, and he just lost it about to attack his friend, but we got in the cab before anything could go down. I later had sex with him, and it was fun. And who comes crawling into my apartment after a week of no contact, my dear ex. So I let him in, and we drink, and he gets all caught up in our past and how great things were except they weren't for me. So I made out with him, a bit, gave him some blue balls. And when he asked if we were together, I told him to leave and understand that he had lost all of me. It was nice to see him so down since he's a very confident, borderline cocky person. In the end, I feel much better. I had revenge sex and to this day, he tries to write to me and keep a connection. Down, boy, be a good bitch. In short, my boyfriend cheated on me and was abusive, said I was too fat to get him turned on anymore, so he cheated, thus leading me to lose the weight, get sexy, and plan a revenge plot on fucking his best friend, ultimately having him beg me to get me back, then kicking him out and leaving him and his pride puss I vip. My wife has been cheating on me for a year. I plan to divorce her as soon as our child is in childcare. My wife and I have been married for five years. Our child was born just over a year ago. I thought we were happy, but my wife became distant soon after. She stopped being interested in intimacy and stopped showing any affection toward me. She seemed to enjoy spending time with me less and less with each passing week and month. I have tried talking to her about it, but she has blocked any effort from me. I was unable to reach her. Then, about three months ago, I saw a notification on her phone. I was not snooping, I just wanted to pause the music she was playing, but there it was. I can't wait to see you tonight. I've been working hard all day. It was a text from her male best friend. My heart skipped a few beats. I started to look through her phone, and found loads of texts going back months. Nude pictures, dirty talk, everything. I wanted to throw up. Apparently, they started getting closer a few weeks after the child was born, and started sleeping together around three months after the birth. All those nights she went out with her, girlfriends, she actually spent at his house. I wanted to confront her, to leave her and be done with her, but we have a child that needs us. I knew I couldn't take care of a child alone, at least not until he went to kindergarten, and I knew she certainly could, not take care of him alone. Besides, I couldn't ever stand being apart from my little boy, so I made a plan. I collected as much evidence as possible, and I kept my mouth shut. I stopped trying to get closer to her, kept my head down, and just took care of our child with all my heart. But the moment he is settled in kindergarten, when he is two years old, I'll divorce my wife and try to get custody of my boy. And that is my situation. I've got to endure a bit more than a year of this broken marriage, pretend that I don't know what she is doing, and keep things civil. There is no one in my life I can talk to about this. I cry myself to sleep when she is out with the girls, knowing what she is actually doing. I have to stay strong for my boy. I love you, little one. Edit. Since everyone in the comments is telling me to get a paternity test, thank you for your advice. I already did. He is my child. Edit 2. Good God. I went to bed yesterday, and came back this morning to all your lovely comments. Thank you all so much for your feedback and suggestions. To clarify a few things, as I already said yesterday, I had a paternity test done to make sure the kid was mine. He is, but it would not have changed anything for me anyway, at least not how I feel about him. I am talking to an attorney. I have been working with them for a while, gathering evidence and building a case. I am prepared in case my wife decides to act before I plan to do so. Thirdly, sole custody is neither my goal nor my preference. Optimally, 
I will go for some form of custody agreement with me being the primary caregiver. I don't want to take his mom from my little boy, but I am prepared for the worst. Many of you disagree with my opinion about keeping my wife's infidelity quiet. Let me clarify, in any legal proceedings, I will not hesitate to use the evidence I have gathered, but I will not go around advertising my wife's actions to our friends and family, or worse, to our boy. I will make damn sure his relationship with his mom stays as untainted as possible. I am aware that she might use some dirty tactics, and may not be as respectful as I plan to be, which is why I am preparing for any eventuality with my lawyer. Sorry about the confusion regarding kindergarten, daycare, and childcare. I have used those terms interchangeably. In my country, children can be externally cared for as young as a few months old, but that is rare. Most commonly, children are put in external care at two to five years old, depending on the situation. In our case, childcare under the age of two is not available, and our financial situation is a bit more complicated than I care to elaborate on. Suffice it to say, I have done my research and have determined that external child care is not feasible or affordable until he is two, and me staying home to care for him full time is also not feasible. So to be sure I can take care of him all by myself, in case the separation goes less than smoothly, I am waiting until he is regularly going to external child care. My wife's insane behavior and how it changed us. Hello all, never once did I think I would get to this point, to the point of reaching out to strangers on the internet for guidance, but here we are. My wife and I have been together for 10 years, but married for 8. We met in college and were each other's firsts and onlys. I honestly thought we had a unique and beautiful relationship because of that, but it appears that was just me. Some time ago, my wife began working at a new company, at first. She found it difficult to fit in because she's always been reserved, but after encouragement from me, she made friends with a group of girls some of whom were single, divorced, or dating but not married, at first, I was happy she made friends, but then she started going out for drinks, partying, or something else her friends had planned. I became concerned by her change in behavior and tried to talk to her about it, but at the same time, I didn't want to restrict her in any way. It started to affect our relationship in the bedroom. My wife wasn't one to initiate intimacy, but as she continued going out, she was either too tired or wasn't in the mood. At some point. Her company got a new manager whom my wife and her friends had taken a shine to. She began mentioning him in passing. But it got to the point where she pointed out how he handled certain problems that didn't seem to be work-related. I questioned her about her experience with this man, and she brushed off my concerns. She even started asking if I regretted not having more experience with women, to which I said no because she was all I ever needed. I swore I thought for a moment, I saw a flash of sadness in her eyes. But she quickly changed the subject. She started mentioning open marriages as a way to spice up our marriage. I was taken back because my wife was never this kind of person and not that liberal sexually. To be honest, I at first refused and questioned if this had anything to do with the new manager, which she denied but said she felt like missed out but at the same time didn't want to lose me. So this was a safer option. I warned her that she was playing with fire, then reluctantly and naively agreed. So we set some rules mainly not to sleep with another person in our home. So for a year and my wife goes on dates, has one night stands. Then as if I didn't see it coming somehow is in some kind of relationship with that manager. I, on the other hand, had a few dates but no one night stands because, freaky, it felt wrong to me. My wife would ask if I was fine but really wouldn't change her behavior. At some point, I felt the love I had for her that tear, special innocence of marriage was gone. And it was killing me inside. I ended up going on a date with an amazing woman who migrated over from South Korea. The conversation was effortless. She had the wit of a lightning fast white crack and a smile that made one forget himself. This of course led to more dates until we were intimate. I honestly never had sex like I had with this woman and I never knew a woman could be so giving and make one feel so desirable. At first, my wife thought it was cute, but as the months went by, she began questioning my relationship with my lover. I promptly pointed out that this was her idea, and even though she was in a relationship with the manager, I was concerned about it. She was silent, she looked like she wanted to say something but held her tongue. She began coming home early to surprise me with dinner and get the house extra clean. She then started coming to my workplace to drop off lunch and began to initiate intimacy in the bedroom, honestly. If it wasn't for her opening up our marriage, which I am also to blame for agreeing. All this would have had me jumping for Joe. I barely gave in to her attempts at intimacy. And when I did, 
It was simply to get it over with. Something in me toward my wife died. And I could see she felt it too. I asked what brought on this change in her and what was different. And the response I got was that she wants to show me that she loves me and is happy with me. I never intended to, but I burst out laughing. I asked about her little group of friends, her manager lover, or her one-night stands. She didn't respond that day and simply went to bed in tears. The next day, I get home to find her waiting for me, she told me she wants to close the marriage. That this whole experience was a horrible mistake, that she regrets everything, and that she wants us to be the focus of our relationship again. I told her to be honest with me and tell me what inspired all this in the first place. And wouldn't you know it? It was her group of friends that planted the idea because of their numerous sexual exploits. And when her manager came around, he surprisingly supported that lifestyle and encouraged my wife to live free. Apparently, developed into an emotional affair, but only got physical once the marriage opened. Wow, that makes it be. She sees now that she never needed a comparison. That what we had was truly unique and special. That now she feels like she murdered our marriage and any chance of a life together. I told her I might not ever be able to see her as my wife again. And this made her break down in front of me. I simply held her in silence as she cried until she fell asleep in my arms on the couch. She has since left her job and cut contact with all her friends and her manager. She even told me she's willing to spend the rest of her life making it up to me and working her fingers to the bone to be seen as a wife by me, but I haven't cut contact with my lover. My lover quite frankly makes me feel like a man, like I can challenge the world and my wife hasn't in a while. The truth is, I don't know what to do in this situation. I would love to get the special feeling back if possible, but my lover basically saved me Why was at my lowest. Please help me. I forgot to add that we have our first marriage counseling session in a couple of hours. Not sure how that will go. Revenge on the cheating wife now acts as well as the karma that came afterwards. So I am in the army, and I am married. I was approaching my first deployment to Iraq. It was very stressful, and it had my wife wanting me to find a way to stay and not deploy. Obvious things any wife would try to talk about. Anyway, so we have no kids but we both want them. So we talk about getting out of debt while I'm gone. She talks to her best friend back home in another state, where we are both from. Her friend agrees to let her move in and charge modest $300 rent so that we can get out of debt and start a family when I come back, a plan I was actually very pleased with. I deploy, and she is there, crying her eyes out, saying she will miss me and love me. And we will start a family when we get back. Fast forward two months, she starts acting distant, not wanting to talk much on our scheduled calls or text back one or two word answers. We've been together for six years, and she is never at a loss for words. Anyway, one day she says, need some space. She asked someone who is 10,000 miles away for space. I explain why she says she just needs space. She wants to find herself, so I remember back when we lived at home. She had a guy who was always borderline inappropriate. I'm not a very jealous person. And I trust her, so I start seeing said guy in basically all her pictures she posts with a group. Every time he is in the picture, everyone else changes, but never him. So for the first time, I'm very jealous and uneasy about everything. So I cloned her phone so I could receive every text she receives, as well as every text she sends. I'll never forget the first text I saw after cloning her phone. Hey, babe, I'll see you after work. Want me to save you any of my leftovers? from her to him. It destroyed me. I lost 35 pounds in a week. I didn't eat or sleep. I stared at the phone, watching every conversation, watching them talk about trying to have a baby. It was literally everything a married person fears. I ask her if she is seeing someone. And she says no, she isn't. She is taking care of herself, and she loves me. I don't say anything about receiving her texts for two months over this time. She finally admits cheating and that he is so much better than me at sex, treating her right, and doing what she wants. During this time, she pays off our debt, gets tattoos with him matching I love you tattoos, goes to shows with him, buys clothes, etc. With the money I'm making. So this is where revenge starts, I put a freeze on the account for a month. And during that time, I change every password on every account to something she wouldn't guess army jargon slant terms. I block her on Facebook and my phone, so she has no way to contact me. She lost her car to repo a few months later, got kicked out of her place, and had to sell her prized shoes and purses just to stay alive. 
I then find out she got a job at her old restaurant, so I post all the text conversations I have with her and the guy talking about having babies that have time stamps on them, as well as the conversations we had with the matching time stamps, showing all of our friends what she has done. I then have friends call and complain at her job constantly on both sides. They work at a restaurant, so I also have friends who dine and dash. They both get fired, so she tries to call my command and tell them that I am abandoning her and she cannot provide for herself. My commander knows what is going on. He does nothing because he had something similar happen. Then, about a month before I come back, she calls me from another number to tell me she is pregnant with his kid. Mind you, I'm still gone, so we cannot get divorced yet. She moved away with him, 10 hours from me. April 24th, 2018, she calls me five months pregnant crying uncontrollably and asking me where she should go. Apparently, they have a giant blow-up fight, and she tells him she is leaving. She says she doesn't know where to go, and I simply say, sorry, not my problem anymore. Fast forward to January of this year. She calls me from a mutual friend's phone. Her, he hit me. It what to do, me. Maybe you don't cheat on your husband when he is deployed for some guy who talks a big game. Her, well, I guess you are happy about this, me. No, but I'm glad I know I'm not the bad guy in this story. And then the next month, her? He is cheating on me with two girls. I'm sorry. I regret everything I did. I fucked it all up, me. Yeah, you did. All in all, this woman destroyed my life, put me into a deep depression I'm still dealing with. But I do feel a little better having proof that I wasn't the problem. To think if this happened even 10 or 5 years ago, I would have come back to an empty bank account, an empty house, as well as seeing my then-wife pregnant with another man's baby. She actually hit me up yesterday to ask for some money to help cover rent, edit, answer a few questions. I realized I left out 